Just you think, oh, he's got no chance. And he did some ridiculous skill. And the next thing you know, these three kids are looking at each other. And he's off just trotting down the wing. There was about uh, 10 to 12 internationals in that year group at various sports. And certainly they, they pushed each other all the time because, you know, they, they, were, they were normal pupils. You know, they weren't superstars. They, they were just... Um, and, they, and they encouraged each other to, to perform. Before he'd even made it to high school, at the age of nine, Bale was spotted by Southampton and enrolled into their academy system. When he reached 15, he was invited to train with the youth team. At this point, little sign that he'd become the superstar he is now. He wasn't rated as one of the top ones, but we persisted with him because he was left-sided, that he did have something. He was a good crosser of the ball. He could beat people. But if you were saying to me, was he a top player at that stage, the answer would be no. Um, that's probably because he didn't have the physicality that he now obviously has. And I remember, I think the first time I ever seen Gareth, I think he, he went up to challenge for the ball to head it and fe fell back in his back and had to be carried off. So <laughs> that was the first time I ever seen him. He wasn't very big, there's no getting away from that. And that's when that d dedication and that hunger and that will to win you know, overrides your physical stature. January 2005, and it was make or break time for Bale. He had one 90-minute match to save his dream of a career in football. Mess it up and that might be it. No academy scholarship at Southampton, no professional contract, no megastar status. That was a massive, massive day in his family's life. And I think all three of us were hoping and praying that Gareth came up with the goods. History will tell you we won the game 5-1. We played fantastic. Gareth had one of those games that you dream of when you're in that situation. And when I saw the coach after the game, it was an obvious one and we were both delighted for the Bale family and Gareth in particular. months then he's got a very bright future to look forward to from the day he came in full-time as a scholar when he was 16 plus I think most people then would have seen a massive change in him physically confidence wise and mentally Bale was settling well into life at Southampton the hairstyle was getting a little fancier and the winner is Gareth Bale and the recognition was starting to follow. I'm just enjoying my football, so as long as I'm enjoying it, I'm going to be playing well, and just hopefully I'll continue. Gareth um, was always somebody that people were speaking about. This fabulous left back at the time, um, young player with bags of energy, enthusiasm, and I had no fears of um, giving Gareth his opportunity. Got into the first team and never looked back. Still only 16, his friends back in Cardiff still sat in the classroom. Bale had been thrown into the cut and thrust of the championship. Gareth Bale, and he scores! The second youngest player ever to be picked for Southampton's first team. But he wasn't simply a defender doing his best to hold off men more than twice his age. He was frightening the life out of people further up the pitch. Oh, what a strike! And what he was scoring goals and turning heads, and he was getting stronger. Players just wondered who this player was. Previously, they'd been able to brush him off the ball, whereas now, all of a sudden, all they could see was the number on his back. Bale is up for this one, and scores! By the end of his first full season at Southampton, Bale had made a name for himself. He'd played more than 40 first-team games and scored five goals. The country had taken notice. But Bale would soon be exposed to an even wider audience as another Cardiff man, John Toshak, pulled Bale through the Wales ranks and into his senior national team.
The manager always very protective and I remember Wales picking them for the full squad and he's playing every game in the championship and I think you know and I wanted John Ta Toshak to say you know let him settle down before he pushing them straight in there but John pushed them straight in there and he, <laughs> and he coped with it all. If we weren't thinking of using him at some stage we wouldn't have uh, we wouldn't have asked him to come back over you know and he looks he looks the part he's played the last few games at Southampton you can see he's uh, you know, he's well educated, his habits are the right ones, the ones that we like. True to his word, Toshak brought Bale off the bench for a friendly against Trinidad and Tobago. Another milestone. Gareth Bale becomes Wales' youngest ever international. 16 years and 315 days. Wales celebrated wonder kit. Bale had taken the record off another famous left winger who'd grown up just three miles across Cardiff from him, Ryan Giggs. Comparisons with the Manchester United star would be inevitable. Good ball through for Bale here, and return to Archer, and then Mike just have won the game. Unfazed on the big stage, Bale has set up the winning goal. Gareth Bale, record breaker, how does that feel? Yeah, obviously, I think it's good, yeah, enjoyed every minute of the game and just happy to get on, really, yeah. What's it been like the last couple of days with the senior squad? Well, obviously, I'm, it's just a, a new experience for me and just enjoy every minute of it, just being around all the big players and that, so it's good, yeah. You've broken the Welsh record, Ryan Giggs held this record a couple of years back. Just how does it make you feel? I wasn't expecting all this this year, so, yeah, I'm proud, and my parents, obviously, are proud of me, so I just want to build on from here now. Five months later, he made a stunning return to the Wales team, this time picked from the start in a European qualifier against Slovakia. An early demonstration of why his left boot would become one of the most precious and sought-after commodities in world football. At 17, the youngest player to score for the full Wales team. It will be Bale. And the only thing worth remembering from a miserable 5-1 thrashing. There was only a brief overlap between the start of Bale's Wales career and the end of Giggs's. So it was like the changing of the guard. Out went one world-class superstar. Oh, stunning! In came another left-sided leading man, 16 years younger than Giggs, who could sprinkle the same kind of stardust just by turning up for duty. The goal against Slovakia underlined the suspicion Bale was destined for the highest level. His CV was expanding as fast as his list of admirers. But he was still only 17. He was still a Southampton player. Just. He had so much ability and flair and something you don't see in many young players. So it was a case we wanted to hang on to him. And I felt the longer we, we held on to him, the better we'd get. Predictably, bigger clubs were starting to show strong interest in Bale. He was linked with Arsenal and Manchester United. Initially, Southampton fought off attempts to poach their prized asset. But just as Spurs couldn't afford to turn down Madrid's millions, and after a four-month standoff, Southampton eventually accepted a £10 million offer from Spurs for the Welshman. Money talked, and the player wanted to go. We weren't going to let, let Gareth go for less. Um, he had fantastic ability and he wasn't the finished article. Do you think in April 2006 he makes his league debut in Southampton's first team? To think in May 2007 he signs for Tottenham? You know, what, what a story that is. Everyone knew he was the best attacking player from that position of left back in the country. It, it wasn't difficult. It was just that Tottenham took the, the plunge and they were persuaded. The scout at the time, Eddie President, who I employed there at one time, um, he was the one that came back and said, yes, we should take the chance. It was big money for a young boy. And Daniel Levy was brave enough to open the purse and to take the plunge. From debut to departure, Southampton had barely got a year's service from Bale. For the player, though, this was the Premier League, a shot at the big time. He could have gone to Manchester United, but Spurs offered a more realistic hope of regular first-team football. Are you confident you've made the right decision in coming here to White Hart Lane? Um, yeah, I'm confident I've made the right decision. It's obviously a big club, um, just a lot of potential and hopefully we can fulfil that and 
Hopefully I can be a part of it. Well, I think it is the best choice in the long run. You know, at least he's going to get some football at you know, young age. So I think he's got the right choice there. It is what dreams are made of, isn't it? You know, actually playing here. And uh, I know it was, you know, his ultimate goal was to play in the Premiership, but I think we didn't think it would come this soon. Bale, now Berbatov must be offside in the middle. Bale doesn't need it. It wasn't quite a dream debut for Bale at Spurs, but it was pretty close. Just a week after making his Premier League debut against Manchester United, in only his second appearance, Bale got his first Tottenham goal. He's a real talent, this kid. That's why Tottenham forked out the millions that they did. Still an attacking fullback, now the Spurs fans could really see what this kid from Cardiff was all about. A superstar in the making. But to his friends, he was just the same old Gareth. Clean living and dedicated to the game. When he first signed the Tottenham Hotspur, I'm a massive Spurs fan. You know, I couldn't believe it, and it was crazy watching Sky Sports the first time he was on there, and he was sport, he was playing for Tottenham. But when you look back now, um, and you look at what attributes you need to make the top, you know, physically, um, you know, mentally, and you know, your attitude, professionalism. Uh, now it doesn't surprise me to see what he's doing. You know, he, he doesn't drink alcohol or, or anything like that. He's certainly not one that that wants to make headlines for any wrong reasons. Um, you know, he, he purely lets his football. You know, do his talking for him. Ball away from Bale, who committed himself to that tackle and will definitely get a card for lunging in. And a red card! After a promising start to his Spurs career, everything that could go wrong did go wrong for Bale at White Hart Lane. Gareth Bale, who I think is a really good player, has, has lost his way. At that time, he, he was in and out the team, and whenever he played, they never won. They, I think it was, I'm not sure the figure, but it was something like 24, 25 games around that amount of games when he'd never been on a winning team. Poor Gareth Bale, who's equaled a Premier League record now. 21 games for Tottenham without a win. His manager's looking at the team sheet now for next week and going, should we yeah. play him? I remember Alex Ferguson saying to me at Old Trafford, he said, I, couldn't, I wouldn't play him. He said, I'm, I'm superstitious. He said, I'd, you know, and I'm superstitious as well. And I got him on into a game. We were, I think, we were winning three 0 or something. I forget who it was against now, but I brought him on, so that that finished that um, episode. And here is a nice moment for Gareth Bale. He's never appeared on a winning team for Spurs in the Premier League, and that run will come to an end at the 25th attempt. In a difficult season, there was even talk Bale would be loaned out or sold for a fraction of what Spurs paid for him. Oh, I, mean, I hear rumours about loaning him out or something to Notts Forest or something. That, that's, never ever was it going to happen. I'd be lying if I didn't say to you that there were lots of spells where he'd get a little knock in training, he'd limp off, the physio would all run, physios would all run onto him and fuss over him too much, you know? In the end, I said, look, just leave him, he'll get up on his own, you know? and. Um, and he did, and he's just gone on from there. I was still still a young boy at the time, and and um, there was obviously certain aspects I needed to improve, and, and I worked hard in training, and, and I kind of proved to him that, that I was worthy of a, of a spot in the team, and, and when I did that, he gave me my chance. Bale shoots! Oh, he's got it! I don't believe it! Redknapp brought Bale back into the team, this time further up the field. And it proved to be the making of him, the transformation of Bale into a superstar. Once he became established in the team, he never looked back. And uh, then he was able to produce the, uh, the performances that I think everybody thought he was capable of. He did it on a regular basis. He was pleasing the crowds, and the prizes started to follow. The PFA Players Player of the Year, Gareth Bale. If there was a pinnacle to all of it, perhaps it came in a Champions League game in Italy. A hat-trick against the mighty Inter Milan. The night Bale made some of European football's top stars look like schoolboys. It was that wow moment where it was like, oh, where has this kid come from? I think he announced himself to the world. The world stage saw what potential he had. I gave him three days off, this four days off last week because I felt, you know, he needed a break because he'd been playing so well and working so hard. 
I said, go abroad for a few days. And uh, he did. He went to Cardiff. <laughs> and um, we stayed at his mum's. And that's what he's like, you know. He's, he's just a great lad, you know. Two minutes to go. Bale shoots! Oh, what a goal! Bale! The only thing that might have eclipsed his performances for Spurs, his performances for his country. And Wales are right back on the World Cup trail. Thanks to their man in a million, Gareth Bale. Oh, stunning, just magic. Wales is a very important part of his life and his career. But he's a lovely lad. Uh, he likes having a laugh and a joke around the rest of, the, of his teammates. Doesn't expect any preferential, preferential treatment because he's very, very down to earth. He's collected goals from every angle, every distance. There were 42 for Spurs, 11 so far for Wales. All he's missing, they say, is the ego to match. Grounded, professional, and now combining fatherhood with football fame. If he keeps improving, who knows where he can get to? I mean, it's, 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 you know, it's just wonderful, his acceleration, his rise in the last, I would say, three seasons, particularly the last two seasons. And then last year was absolutely incredible. Now, can he repeat that? If he can, absolutely, the sky's the limit. Rumours that Real Madrid had made Bale their number one transfer target stretched back months into last season. Clubs and agents haggling over his price was music to the ears of the marketing men. A footballer of rising stature who could help them sell games consoles, energy drinks, football boots. Perhaps you really know you've made it as a sports person when you're the cover star on glossy magazines like Esquire, normally the preserve of showbiz royalty like Daniel Craig, David Bowie, Robbie Williams, but never a Welsh footballer. When people started talking about him going to Real Madrid, I think it became obvious to us that he was a genuine star. He definitely made that breakthrough into wider consciousness. You know, he was doing commercial endorsement deals. He was being talked about on the front page rather than just the back page. And it was all for his exploits on the field. He's a fantastic role model, family man, he conducts himself in the right way. And now he's propelled into the stratosphere of being one of the best players in the world. So his earning potential is, there, there is no ceiling. There are loads of famous footballers. That's not enough to guarantee you a career outside football. There's something about him, there's some sort of sparkle of some sort that, that people find appealing. You know, when Real Madrid or a team like that goes to spend that much money on something, someone, they're not just buying that person to play, but they're also investing in, in an image um, that will sell Madrid as a brand to Asia and Africa and all around the world, and that's why they make these calculations. The question is whether commercially Bale follows the Beckham path. Does he put his name to brands, or does he become a brand in his own right, as Beckham did? I think this young man will be more focused around football. Once people start, buy, start buying his shirt wherever he's playing, and they start following him, he'll get invite, invited to go to Asia, Australasia, America, and then the young man from Wales can, can do anything he wants to do. The world was watching as Bale got what he had wanted, the move from London to Madrid, fulfilling a childhood dream of playing for one of the world's greatest clubs. And once it was clear he was going, the story moved on to the size of the transfer fee. And the question of how any footballer could be worth wages of £300,000 a week. Uh, in my experience with Cristiano Ronaldo, I paid £80 million pounds at that time and a lot of people said it, it, I was mad, uh, you have to wait for the results. At that moment we could say if it is worth uh, to pay that amount of money or not. A fine life awaits Bale and his young family, the glamour, the glitz of a modern European city. But when he's at work, how will he settle into a dressing room full of egos? How will he blend in next to the man he's called the boss, Cristiano Ronaldo? The only question mark now, of course, is whether he's got the mental strength to be able to cope with such a big move and the spotlight that will be immense um, on him over there in Spain because it, it is different, it's huge, and, and it's whether he can cope with that. Ability-wise, he is phenomenal. 
that on the media they'll go straight from side. They're paying a lot of money for him. You know, they want instant success. I went to Italy, it took me two, three games to get going, but the media won't give him that chance. So in some point it can be a burden and a problem to know that he is a new Galactico in that uh, word that someone used and also that uh, cl the club paid such a huge amount of money. It's, uh, it's one of them things I just, I just want to get started and, and want to show to, to everybody at Real Madrid, the fans and, and everybody else, what I can do. And uh, I don't think there's any more pressure put on me than, than I put on myself. So, um, yeah, I'll be going out there knowing, knowing what I have to do and uh, hopefully I can, I can continue the form uh, from, from last season and, uh, and, and get even better. Uh, gracias uh, por esta gran acogida. Hala Madrid! Bale's not the first Welshman to be tempted abroad. In 1957, the Wales legend John Charles blazed a trail to Juventus for £65,000, then a record transfer fee for a British player. His success in Europe was never really matched by the likes of Ian Rush, who also signed for the Italian club, or Mark Hughes at Barcelona. So what's their advice for Bale? When I went out there, I was a young man in terms of being able to deal with moving to a new country, a new type of football, and, and he's, he, he needs to be comfortable that he can deal with that. But in his, in his brain, it's, um, it's going to be, you know, I do miss my family, I do miss my friends, and there's, you can easily pick, when you go abroad, there's a lot of false friends that want to be your friend. So that's the, they are the pitfalls which uh, he needs to, to, to suss out, really, and uh, if he can do that, because I'm telling you one thing, one thing 100% certain, if you are not happy off the pitch, you will not produce your best football on the pitch. And I think if you look back at all the English or British players, if you like, that have been successful going abroad, it's really the ones that have just got themselves into the culture, learnt the language and made part of life there enjoyable. When I went out there, I was thinking in the back of my mind, well, I'll give it two years, I'll be back, was that back home. Yeah, and it's completely the wrong way to go about it. You've got to... Uh, go there with the intention of staying there for as long as you can. But the Spaniards are going to uh, to receive him open arms. Uh, with with uh, I insist trying to help him to uh, to enjoy life here and to be integrated in the team as soon as possible. It's a new chapter in my life. Um, I think it, it's definitely important to to learn the language, learn the culture, and uh, I think it, it'll be exciting for me to do that. And. Uh, I think it'll make me grow up as a person, become a, a better person, and uh, yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to the challenge and uh, hopefully settling down as quick as I can. It'll be fine. Uh, of course, all the razzmatazz that comes with playing for a club like Real Madrid, um, he'll be off the court with that because he's a quiet boy, he doesn't get carried away. He's got the platform, he's got the stage. I think he can take it on board and, uh, you know, become a really Probably the greatest Welsh player. John Charles was my hero. Maybe Gareth Bale will be the hero of the next generation. Good players and very good players as he is can play anywhere, in any team, with any system, with any strategy. So I don't see any problem that he's going to, to be OK in the club. And I hope that Real Madrid can get with him a lot of success and many titles. Is what all the followers and fans of Real Madrid are looking for challenges that I've seen him face, you know, during his schoolboy years, when he went to Tottenham, you know, I have no doubt whatsoever that he'll continue to have fantastic support from his parents, from his family, and that, listen, I think it'll be a revelation, I really do, and I'm absolutely thrilled that he's a Welshman. That's where I take the pride from.